Hi, uh, I am Jessica Riley. I am the chair of the Medfield School Committee this year. And with me is... Leo Brem. I'm the vice chair of the Medfield School Committee this year. And we wanted to uh, come and give an update regarding where we are as a district with our plans for full physical reentry, hopefully for all of our kids. Um, Does that mean from, full back, Jess? I mean, like, that's all like the kids coming back. Full back. All, that is all the kids in, going to school every day of the week. Is that, yes. what, is that what you're saying? That is what I am saying. Do I? <laughs> hang on. Thank you. <laughs> We really wanted to talk about the specifics of information that we have, some of the challenges that we're going to face, and where we want to go from here. Because I think that this is a really important thing for people to hear um, throughout the district and in the community. Um, as a preface, we started planning uh, re-entry almost 11 months ago to the, to the day. You know, I, I think we had a school committee um, meeting on March 12th of 2020. And that night was the very first time it became clear that we were going to ask kids to stay home. And I remember thinking, I, I cannot believe that this is where I am and what I am saying and how we are thinking right now. It was so alien to me. And I have tried to keep that in mind that feeling of wrongness about this over the last year. And it has been a difficult year for many, many, many people. I do not, and I don't think anybody on the committee or anybody in this schools underestimates the, the impact that this has had economically, socially, in terms of mental health, both for our parents as well as for our students and how much we have not known or has been posited but not backed up and how much we have all individually at a local level and in the world had to make this up as we go. And I really want to acknowledge that. And I think that we, we have all had yeah. discussions about that. We had very little basis to go off of on how to plan for something like this. Um, and since then, you know, how many different adjustments and pivots we've had to make right. um, along the way as we've continued to plan, uh, set times and goals, uh, and um, the school department and the busing has had to adjust and move. And um, But with the ultimate goal, you know, one of the things that I think um, you know, when we're looking at our track record is we've been very consistent of keeping kids in uh, mm -hmm. and keeping the, uh, the protocols in place, the safety protocols has resulted that we haven't had to uh, quarantine a school building or anything like that, um, which I think is huge. Because um, right. all the surrounding towns have had to do that at one point or another uh, to send kids that you, know, you have to stay out for two weeks. Um, and we've been, never had to do that, which I think is a test to both um, both the people in the schools and the community at large, right? Mm -hmm. They've been practicing um, safety, you know, safety protocols that are keeping the spread very low in Medfield, and um, as a result, um, we're we're coming back. Yeah. And I we think are. that's that's the message. I mean, uh, you know, thank you to the community for yeah. you know, practicing those protocols and to the schools and our teachers and our and our students because uh, because they are following the rules and. Uh, doing such a good job of it, um, we can now right. we can now go back. So at this point, we have in school physically full time our pre K, which has been in since September, since we opened on September sixteenth. Our uh, kindergarten, which has been in since January fourth. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and we returned our first grades to school. Um, this Monday, so full time since Monday. Um, and so Memorial itself is back. We are kind of doing a cascading plan of planning um, how we reconfigure space. We expect uh, Wheelock to be next and Dale 
Uh, I do know that Dr. Marson and the administrative team, being the principals and facilities managers um, spent and teachers, spent February vacation really looking at how do we put uh, kids not only the furthest distance away from each other that we can, but what sorts of ways can we kind of creatively create spaces so that they do not feel quite so um, odd, quite so disjointed. You know, we really are trying to look at consistency of education and curriculum as well as just how do we get the bodies there. Different schools have different challenges. Yeah, they've been doing amazing. I, the, um, those pictures of the cafeteria that they've turned into those classrooms. At I mean, Memorial? they look amazing. Yeah. Yes, I mean, those classrooms, the teachers did such a great job. They look yeah. so inviting. It's, um, you know, they've made the space very friendly and welcoming. So um, I have a, I'm very confident that our, our team will do that. And also, you know, um, I've heard some feedback. From some, a lot of people are worried about some of the larger sizes, even at the secondary mm -hmm. school. Um, and I talked to Dr. Marshall about this uh, the other day, and he's going to be, um, they're looking at the class sections that have larger sections, and they're going to reschedule them into larger spaces so that mm -hmm. they can maintain those safe distances. So I know a lot of people have been worried about that, and I want to make sure that some of that information gets out there, that um, the administration is absolutely looking at any, you know, any course section that might happen to be larger than others, um, they're going to move them into those larger spaces that are available, like like CAFs or lecture halls and other things. And I think that really impacts our relationship and how we are trying to work with the Board of Health as well. Our school nurse leader, Kathy Thompson, is a member of the Board of Health, and we have a school physician, um, a district physician, who we have been in constant contact with, as well as in informal conversations with the Board of Health over time. Um, we will be having a joint meeting with them on uh, March 9th yes. at 4 p.m. Uh, so that will be a joint meeting officially of the BOH and the school committee. And I see that, and I think uh, the chair of the BOH, Stephen Rush, see that as an opportunity for us to get together and talk about safety concerns, recommendations, because we will be bringing kids back in some grades um, at less than six feet. The federal government, the CDC, continues to recommend six feet unless it is not feasible to bring kids back at less than six feet, which is a little bit of a, a dance there. Um, but in a community in which our infection rates seem to be so low at this point, yeah. That um, is one of the we think I that's read. important. At the same time, our kids who are in high school are of the age that they are in a kind of slightly higher risk category than what we have been able to see over the last year in terms of spread with younger children. So we are being very mindful of that. You know, obviously that is a concern across the board. Um, so we do want to kind of get consultation and advice within that. And that's just a part of the the challenges that we see, you know, to yeah, get so kids back. But I we want to make sure that we're doing it the best way we can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the one of the last Board of Health meetings, not the last one, but I think the previous one, they did a really good job of uh, a presentation showing all the measures that were taken in the school, mm -hmm. uh, from the air filtration to the right. cleaning practices um, and the practices that they have for the students. Um, you know, right from the time they step on the bus, they disinfect their hands and the whole bit. My kids are just, they just go through the motions. They completely understand it. Um, I think it'd be maybe good to review those again at that next mm -hmm. meeting. I think they, they did such a great job um, highlighting all the care that was taken this past summer right. to prepare our buildings. Right. Um, I can't say enough about Mike and Francesca, who was hyper-focused on that all summer long, both right. acquiring PPE like backdoor deals, I think, trying to get it <laughs> off of, you know, some truck that he may have robbed to get the PPE into the schools. All right. And buying cleaning. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> and uh, not, not to mention buying uh, hand sanitizer by the 55-gallon drum. I mean, right, right. I mean that's there's a, been a hyper focus on making sure that uh, we're as safe as possible in our schools. Right. And uh, so, so, how do we kind of work that now that yeah. we have more kids, more density? Uh, and making sure that we're, we're keeping all of that in mind, that there's no part of it that's falling behind. 
one of the other things that's really helped us kind of move forward is, you know, to some extent, Dr. Marston was like, listen, we just need to make this happen. And I think we had all been feeling like, we just need to make this happen. How's it going to happen in the regulatory kind of environment that we have right now? Because we've gotten so many differently mixed messages and there are things that cannot happen unless you have uh, uh, DESE, the Department of Education, uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, kind of behind you saying, officially, this is how it's got to go. Um, and some of those things have loosened up. And with the change of the administration uh, in Washington, we are now kind of seeing uh, more of a loosening of um, resources and funding that definitely, and we're getting more specific guidance from governmental um, authorities than we were able to have before. And those are things that we need to have in our pocket. And, it, and I think uh, in my communications with other school committees across the state, um, which we do communicate very frequently, uh, trying to kind of figure out how we benefit every kid in a state, um, this has been the biggest frustration that we have had is that there has been a whole lot of suggestion and a whole lot of responsibility put at the local level. But in between suggestion and responsibility put at the local level needs to be a level of um, unified and specific message around best practices. Yeah. Otherwise, we cannot move forward frequently. Well, that's and that's a big part of making not just, you know, the regulations can be there, but being able to trust trust in them, right? Exactly. We have, we have to, well, that's you know, the, the other part. Being able to win hearts and minds that this is the a safe method that we're, you know, doing, not just because, you know, some bureaucrats want the kids back in school, but more that because the science says this is right. this is safe and this is working. Um, we have track records now about what's working and what's not. Um, you know, unfo you know, some unfortunately in some other states they they kind of rushed back and had some sweeping um, you know, uh, outbreaks, you know, right. particularly in Georgia. Um, and we're not out of the woods yet. No, but I think the, but things are getting better. Yeah, things are absolutely better. You know, um, I saw the Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine is in final right. stages. So that's also very promising. Right. And so, that there seem to be vaccines that can also manage the variants that we're starting yeah. to, so that they're, that we're starting to see. And it, so I think that there is a level of confidence that what hurdles we may run into we also have the tools to be able to mitigate them. And that uh, there is a sense that if we go back in and there is a surge or there are other complications around that, there are tools in place that allow us to continue to move forward instead of really truly overwhelmingly risking our children's physical health um, but at the same time, we so clearly understand the mental health impacts that this has had on the full community. And we, with these new kinds of pieces of hope, we feel like we can kind of meet both of those risk uh, reward scenarios and move forward a little bit more. Yeah, well, and that's going to be one of our next challenges too, you know, is to make sure we prioritize next year's budget that so that we can, um, you know, scaffold those, the, you know, those newer needs as a result of the pandemic for next year, um, you know, and prioritizing that budget is, you know, in a year where, when you're not going to get uh, as much uh, as needed. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be quite a, um, quite a budget season, I think. The other thing we should probably mention here is around, um, you know, asking for some patience from everybody as we go back around bus route changes. I know, it's like, how do you ask for patience from Again. a community that has been <laughs> so patient? I know. I talked to someone yesterday, uh, you know, who says uh, the elementary bus, three elementary buses all going to the same school came down her one street yesterday. Yeah. And I said, I said, you know, the, the change, there will be some changes and they'll continue to work it out as we um, as we move back. And that's one of, you know, back to some of those regulations, that's one that was really helpful to us is, that, is yeah. peeling back um, the bus capacity. Uh, and, you know, I think we should also, there's been some concern about that. So yeah. I'd like to reiterate that 
we're still going to maintain maintain safe distances on the bus. We're not sticking three kids in a no, seat. We're not sticking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if anything, I think that at this point we're expecting to to. It's one per seat, I believe. One per seat, which siblings, allows us to put sit together. Yeah. Right. Which allows us to put twenty instead of twenty three kids on a bus. Yeah, we can, we put, can put forty six. Yeah. Which is uh, the just the difference between just so few people having bus transport and being able to really financially make this work for us as well as just logistically. You know, there are not a lot of buses and there are not a lot of drivers out there. So a lot of it is, has yeah. been held up by just the possibility of getting kids to school. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a tough year for school districts all over. Um, matter of fact, I just happened to be uh, looking at, um, there's a website for um, schools called School Spring. Um, mm -hmm. That's where mostly uh, of the teaching jobs are posted. And currently in the Commonwealth, there's 3,300 classroom teacher openings yeah. in Massachusetts right now. Out of 370 districts, you know, that's a high average per district of empty, yeah. empty positions. You know, just so people understand that that's a real, that's a, that's a real struggle um, when you're, you're used to posting a position even mid-year. Uh, you would get 50 applications for like, say, one grade five. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this is happening in Walpole. They posted a position for grade five um, for their Elm Street school. Zero applications. That's, That's amazing that. because Zero. I know that we have had applications or times in the past where we have put an application or put out a, a request for applications for um, grade level teachers, and we have had. 400 respondents. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty, that, because that's pretty normal. There are in certain my districts that, that people truly do want to, to come to. Yep. You know, Walpole is one of them. We are yep. one of them. We're lucky enough to be able to, to say that. Before we get too far off of re entry, uh, I do want to say that uh, Dr. Marsden is going to be putting out a survey around um, parent and student uh, needs for. Uh, Reentry. We understand that there are some families who will not feel as though it is safe for them yet to return in anything outside of a hybrid model, and there is a um, there is an option to go to cohort D if you need to do that. But we really need to, you know, we hope that you've been thinking and marinating about that for the last, you know, ten days or so, and that you can make that decision. We'll be talking about you know whether you need to take the bus, um, and that Dr. Marsden is going to be putting that survey out in the next few days. Uh, so we're taping this today. It's the twenty seventh. Seventh, I think. Six. <laughs> so please watch for it. <laughs> um, and this is one of those surveys where uh, it's not so much like kind of an opinion survey. It's really about like we need to know. We need to know numbers so that we can be making this yes, happen please. as quickly as we can. Yeah. So please um, be diligent about returning that survey as soon as possible. Um, right. And there will be some commenting section. Please be honest about your concerns as well, yeah, please. Um, because it's important uh, for the school department to hear it. And, um, and I know many of you have reached out to me personally and sent emails. I've certainly emails. had many emails please, myself. Yeah, please continue to do that. Um, and even if you don't get immediate responses, it's we are absolutely cataloging all the concerns um, and passing them along. Uh, you know, to school administration and to each other. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's important that um, you know that we hear about those. So please continue to do that, yeah. and uh, please do look out for that survey. We will use all the normal channels to communicate that. Dr. Marston will send an email. I will post it in the uh, class level, um, the class level Facebook pages, and so on. And mm -hmm. I know um, Jess will do the same. Of and course. Um, so we will get that word out there. So. So it does, you know, just as particularly around the cohort D option, which will continue for anybody who happens to be in, in it already through the end of the school year, certainly. And then I think uh, what the Department of Education has said to us is, or to everybody, is that cohort D would continue for next year, but only for medically fragile children. But the regulations around that have not been written. And I, I think we're going to have to. Uh, I think we'll have to just make we'll our have own decisions just, here. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just have to look and see what we're allowed to do at that point. So I don't want anybody panicking. But at this point, uh, if you feel as though this is not something you can do health wise, we we understand that. But we will also have to hire additional staff 
to cover cohort D, should that be the case. So please let us know as soon as we can. We may have to move people around. And I think the people on the pool, the, the pool testing too. Thank you for the participation. Oh yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. That That is one of those pieces that makes this very uh, comfortable, uh, right. the pool testing. I, right. I'll say that Tanya, my wife who teaches, and Sharon um, has been participating in it. And there's an, uh, because everybody's been doing it in her school, there's a, um, people are feeling more relaxed. Right. As a matter of fact, she says, we're actually talking to people in the, in the teacher's room again. <laughs> right. And uh, she says and it's very, very that's refreshing, right? So yeah. I would imagine that, uh, you know, with that kind of feeling, it will be very helpful uh, about people understanding that we'll be monitoring the situation closely in mm -hmm. the schools, um, you know, about, you know, what the levels are. And right. I think that pool testing is big. So thank you for all the people who are consenting to do that. I saw something funny on Facebook today, and I had always thought this, but managed to keep that a bubble thought. Um, but one person asked her child, who was in uh, elementary school, what uh, it, or I'm sorry, in uh, uh, Blake, I guess, um, what it was like to do the pool testing today. And she said, well, it was kind of like um, picking your nose, but with a cotton swab. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, like, I, I think people do actually, it's weird as it sounds. I think you do need to know that it is, there's no painful part to this, that we yeah. actually, I think off the bat over February vacation had almost a 67% uh, return rate. And, you know, our best, uh, we would really like, obviously we'd like to get that to almost 100. Um, but the best efficacy rate is at about 80. So uh, if you know that it is that easy and that we can get this kind of done efficiently, the state has actually extended its funding for us to do pool testing. Initially, we were thinking we would get five weeks. They are now funding us through um, April 18th. I think then, yeah, April 18th. So, which then allows us to be able to really figure out how we get the resources if the state then doesn't come through to the end of the school year. Yep. It allows us to get the resources and have a little bit more time to try to figure out where those resources come from to continue it throughout because yeah. that's something we feel very And we're, we're working with some folks on trying to yeah. raise those funds now. And uh, so stay tuned. You may yeah. see some initiatives around that. We will uh, also be meeting with the teachers union. So this is always a part of really kind of working with our staff around, not only are we working with our staff informally to make sure that, that they are feeling comfortable and kind of working through, but there's also always a labor part of that. And I know that sometimes that's something that people, not sometimes, frequently people want to know exactly what that is and how that's going right then as it's happening. And unfortunately, um, those are negotiations are protected conversations that need to be done under a certain level of regulation from um, the Labor Relations Board. And so they often seem like they are done under a veil, but that is meant to protect um, both parties throughout. And we will be working through those quickly. And please understand that I think um, we always keep in mind uh, kids first. That is the committees, that is the administrations, and I believe that that is our teachers' best practices, and I, I have no reason to believe that that isn't oh, continuing absolutely. to be the case. Absolutely, I'm hearing a lot of excitement from the yeah. teachers. Yeah, absolutely, they, they are. Want, they, they want, they want, they want the same want things back. we do, yes. right? They just, yeah, they do. people yeah. just want to have they things just, be a little bit more normal or yeah. than they have been for a while. And it's not going to be normal. The biggest thing I've heard is, again, it's back to that, you know, around the safety, you know, they just want to. And we respect we, that. We, we respect that. And so they just want to talk about it sometimes. And As does every we have, parent yep. and every kid. And we have, an, and just so everyone knows, we do have an agreement with them that there, that is, Ready to, that's already been done. We've ratified it, and mm -hmm. uh, we're we're moving forward. So we are moving very forward. Very exciting. Yes, we continue to talk to them. Yep. So. Always continue to talk. Yes. So uh, I, you know, usually we'll kind of give a little bit more of an overview of what's also happening in the district, but this is such a big part of it right now that I really felt that it was important when we came in today to really talk about what's happening um, specifically with this issue, and. Uh, do you yeah. have anything else you want to add, Leo, right no, now? No, I think this this is probably enough. I think the next one we'll probably should talk about next year, you know, yeah. uh, and, and getting year. prepped for next year. 
Yes. So. Well, which is also, to be very clear, not only are we thinking about next year in terms of budget, but we are also thinking about next year in terms of what next year looks like. Yeah. In, in a time in which we have no idea, we're going to try to have an idea. So, again. Well, I look forward to being flexibility the, the football game next year, you know, and, and, you know, with everybody. So. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I have some deferred concert tickets I would like to be able to go right. see. Yep. Like yeah. to yep, go, go to an actual event at the school. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and not freeze my uh -huh. bippy off when I'm trying to hang out with friends in 20 degree That's weather right. on my porch. So those are things that will improve because of the weather, but also because we will have more access and more time and more hope around the ways that we can move our, our community and our society and our country towards a little different version of normal. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. You betcha, Leo. Thanks.